we know how to use variables, and we know how to do mathematical expressions. Now let's put this together and create some sort of equations. Say for example that I drove 294 miles on 10 and a half gallons of gas. I can calculate that. I can set that into miles per gallon and create an equation like this, 294 divided by 10.5. And then I can print m, because by itself just setting an m equal to something doesn't do anything, and I get 28 miles to the gallon. That's great. But it's not ideal because every time I change the number of miles and the number of gallons that I've used, I have to recreate my formula. Ideally, I just like the formula to stay the same and then change the values. And I can do that by adding more variables. So, for example, I could do m equals 294 for 294 miles driven, g equals 10.5, and, hmm, well, I already used M, so I'm going to use M2 and have that be my miles per gallon. And then I can just print M2. Now, if I need to change, for example, the miles driven, and let's say that I did 4052 and the gallons were, were 12, then I can just rerun this same formula and print out the result without changing anything, but the values change because the variables changed, and this works out a little bit better. Now, this still isn't ideal, because if you take a look at this formula that I've got going on right here, m2 equals m divided by g, most people really couldn't figure out it was a miles per gallon formula. There's not enough there. Now, it might be pretty common in math to only use one variable, excuse me, one letter for a variable name, but with computers, we can actually make our variable names pretty long. So I can make this program a lot easier to understand by doing the following. Miles driven equals 294. And gallons used equals 10.5. And then I can do MPG equals miles driven divided by gallons used and I can print my MPG. What's great about this is this code is self-documenting. I can look and read at this code. In fact, somebody who doesn't know how to program could probably look, read this code, and understand what's going on. Now, they couldn't understand this up here with just the numbers, probably couldn't understand this very well, and this, though, just because I'm using longer words makes it a whole lot easier to understand. So I highly recommend thinking about the different variable names you use. It's really tempting to not think at all and just use X or A or B or C. But later on, it's going to catch you or it's going to catch somebody else that's using your code. And even in the case of learning to program where you're the only one, you and the teacher, reading your code, you'll find it a lot easier to figure out what's going wrong with your program if you use sensible variable names. So here's another example for Let's see, if I did IR equals 0 0.12, and then I do B equals 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, uh, 0.34, and I equals IR times B. There, can you understand what I did? Or what if instead I did interest rate is equal to 0 0.12, account balance is equal to 12123.34 and interest amount is equal to the interest rate times the account balance. There we go. Now we can print out the interest amount and get the amount of interest that would be used and it is a whole lot easier to understand this set of code than it was this set of code. So again, try to use variable names that are going to give whoever reads the code, even if it's just you, some sort of idea of what's going on. Okay, this is still only semi-useful because really I would like to hide this stuff and allow a user to more easily work with it. Plus, up here where I recreated this equation, it really didn't work as well because I had to retype everything and what I'd like to do is only modify the things that I want to change and we can do that by creating a script a script we're going to put all of these commands rather than typing them in at a command prompt 
this is a command prompt right here. With a script, we are going to type all of these and then just run them all in one big batch. So I'm going to do file, and then once you click on file, uh, Windows kind of going off here, but I can do file, new window. So go up to your Python, Python shell and select file, new window. And you'll get a new window that pops up. Let me resize this here. It'll look something like this. We can put our script in here, and this will make it a lot easier to work with. So, for example, I can do the same sort of things here miles driven. And go ahead and give this a try on your own computer. And mpg is equal to miles driven divided by gallons used and print mpg. Okay, once you've got your set of commands typed into this window, the next step is to actually save it. So how do we go about saving it? Easy enough, underneath the file menu, we want to do save. So remember, I got two windows going on here. I don't want to try to file save this window, which is really easy to do, accidentally clicking here and then doing file save. And what you're going to do if you do file save here is save all of this stuff, not the program that's hidden now. There it is. Not the program that's hidden and the one you actually want to save. So I've occasionally had people turn in this window right here rather than this window. And this is the window that I want. So I do file, save. And once I do that, you're going to get a window that pops up and looks something like this. Now, right now, it is telling me that I want to save it in the local disk Python 32 directory. This is actually the default location that it will try to save files to. And it is the last location, well, almost last location, that you actually want to save it to. It's a terrible spot to save files. I don't want to save it to my Python folder. It could mess up the other Python files that are in there. So I don't want to save it to Python 32. For right now, I'm just going to click um, a different location in order to save my files. And uh, let's see, where do I want to save it? Let's just save it on my desktop, for example. And I've got my desktop here. And let's save it. What should I call this? I'm going to call this MPG Calculator. Now, I don't want to hit enter just yet. If I hit enter right now, it'll save it as mpg underscore calculator, but it, and it'll run okay, but the computer won't actually know it's a Python file, which is a bit confusing since it'll run it this way inside my idle window. But I want to end it with a .py. This, like a .doc or .docx or .xls, will tell the computer it's a Python file. It's really easy to forget this. If you forget this, you won't get some nice color coding syntax highlighting going on up here and everything will be black. Um, so you can see right here I've got like a little purple print sign. If I don't save it with a .py, that'll be black and the whole thing will be black. But with a .py on there, it'll work. Once I've done that, I can go up to the Run menu and run the module. Then I can see over here in this window, it's gone ahead and run it and calculated my miles per gallon, which is a little bit different than before because I think I did a little typo when I entered the MPG. This should be 10.5, but look how easy it is to change this. All I have to do is change that, then go ahead and do run module. It asks me if I want to save it, sure. And now I get the 28. So it is a lot easier to change this, such as if I go 15 miles or 15 gallons and do 450 miles. What's my miles per gallon? Yep, I'll save it. 30 miles per gallon. So this running it in a batch script is a lot better. And in fact, you will almost always want to do all your programming inside of this separate script window. Then you want to try typing it in here. Please don't try typing your program in here because once you start typing it in here, you really can't save it very easy, right? You can do file save, but it'll put all these little funny symbols in front of it and you can't run it. So you totally do not, from this point forward, want to type in your program starting at this command prompt. It's really easy to perhaps to forget that and start typing it in and you're going to lose all your work. So really pay attention 
and do a file, new window up here, and type a program in a separate window. Okay, now this is still only semi-useful. I run the program and I get like 30, 28 out. It's not very user friendly. I don't want to have a user have to come up here and edit the program. I want this to work a little bit better. And I can by actually asking the user, using an input function, how many miles they drove. And this is how the input function works. So rather than just saying it's 450, I'm going to have the user input enter miles driven. So what the computer will do is it will print out everything between these double quotes. It works a lot like a print statement, except instead of just printing it to the screen, it will print this and then it will stop and it will wait for the user to type in something. So whatever the user types in will be stored into, whatever they type in right here, will go into this miles driven variable. So if the user types in 450, 450 goes into miles driven. So once I've done that, I can also do the same down here, input enter gallons used. Great, so I've got a program here, they enter the miles driven, they enter the gallons used, I do the division, I print it out, everything should be happy. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and then run it, run module. And look down here, it says enter miles driven. Yay, I type in 450, enter, gallons used, I type in 12, oh, I got an error. How terrible. Gosh, everything looked fine over here. So to understand where this error comes from, I have to understand a little bit more about how computers work. And the reason is that to the computer, this is text. As far as the computer is concerned, I could have easily just typed in Fred and George, and the computer has no idea how to divide Fred and George. You actually need to specifically tell the computer what the user has typed in is a number and convert it so that it is treated as a number. So how do I do that? I actually up here put in either int or float, and let me show you the difference between the two here. This will convert whatever the user types into, into an integer variable, that is a variable without any sort of decimal. So, I can either do it this way, oh, something's a bit odd here, or I could do it on two lines if nesting those functions is a little bit confusing. I can do miles driven is equal to an integer. And I can do the same down here. You are telling the computer that what the user typed in is expected to be an integer and go ahead and treat it as such. It won't be George or Fred. So if I type this in, I type it, 450, 200, then I got 2.25 miles per gallon. Not actually great mileage, but hey, it worked. And I can even be a little bit fancier. I can type in your miles per gallon, colon, quote, and a comma. Then I run this, enter miles driven, 400 gallons used. Let's say it's 10.5. Oh, what's the problem here? Well, the problem right here is I told it to convert it to an integer, and what did I type in? 10.5. 10.5 is not an integer. It is actually a decimal number, and to convert something into a number that handles decimals, instead of int, what we need to use is float. Float is short for floating point variable. It basically means that you've got 10, and you can have a point here, point 0.4, or this floating point could be somewhere else in the number. But at any rate, you've got a number that's got a decimal in it, and that's what float means. So if what you are working with has a decimal in it, use float. If you know it's going to be an integer, then use int. The computer can actually handle integers just a little bit faster than it can handle floating point numbers. So it is a little bit better to use 
integer when you actually have and know that it's going to be an integer and not just use float for everything. Okay, so I've got this. I switch this to float. Now if I run the program, I can do 294. Whoa, that was strange. I can do 294, 10.5, and there you go. My miles per gallon comes out correctly. Now you can do any sort of equation this way, and the equations are typically divided up into the following way. First off, get data from user, do calculations, print result. So if you wanted to do kinetic energy or any other type of equation, area of a circle, area of a rectangle, get all of the data from the user, doing different questions up here, do the calculation, so do the calculation down here, and then do your results here. So essentially if you were to do this out flowchart style, your program starts here, you get the data here, do the calculations here, print the results here, and then you're done. So this actually is the same sort of flowchart that you'll end up using when you do video games. You're going to get the keyboard, you're going to get the mouse interactions, you're going to get the game controller, you're going to do the calculations, what should blow up, what should move where, and then finally you'll draw everything onto the screen and you repeat that about 20 times per second. So what you're doing here with calculations, same idea that you're going to end up doing on the video games, even though you might not initially think of it that way. So important to be able to do this and your next step at this point is take a look at the multiple choice review quiz take a look at the review questions and then try the lab try doing this with some other different types of uh, equations and make sure that you understand how to work this before you move on because if you don't fully understand this and you haven't tried it and you haven't done it successfully then really if you start working on chapters two three four and so forth you're just going to be wasting your time because you really need the fundamentals so go ahead and give this a try try creating your own different types of equations keep in mind over here on the book that uh, if you take a look there's the multiple choice review quiz here so don't forget to take that take a look at all of these different functions right here and also go down here at the bottom there is lab number one so way down here give that lab number one a try and make sure that you get it completed successfully if you don't ask somebody for questions uh, because you really want to understand that before you can move on to the next step and you can't actually see that particular lab I can tell that right now so I need to move this screen up a little bit more so anyway yeah that lab link is right down there alright